the lights. What the heck? I can't even see. Whoa. Somebody just bumped into me, man. Coach, what happened to the lights? We have to get ready for the big game this weekend. I don't know, Nate. The rink has a problem with one of their new compressor systems they just installed. Apparently, every once in a while, the main breaker trips. And then when they reset the breaker, the lights take 15 minutes to come back on. I just saw the Zamboni guy going into the electrical room, so it must have happened again. Remember a few years ago when the lights went out at the Super Bowl? This story is somewhat similar. Supposedly, they turned off all the air conditioning units during the halftime show to prevent the smoke from swirling around the stadium. When they turned the units back on, they turned them all on at the same time. The inrush from the motors in the air conditioning system was too large and tripped the main breaker for half the stadium. Part of the issue in that case was the settings on the relay for the circuit breaker, but it illustrates a key point that the inrush current from motors can be significant and cause nuisance tripping of protective devices. In addition, these high inrush currents cause an immediate and sometimes significant drop in voltage, which cause light flicker or other issues with loads like the HID lights in the ice rink. How can you prevent motor starting issues while ensuring proper operation and protection of your motors? In this video, we will discuss various methods of motor starting and touch on motor protection techniques that you can learn about here at the Power Systems Experience Center. When a motor starts across the line, it typically draws about six times its normal full load current. For example, if a 100 horsepower motor has a full load rating of 125 amperes, it will draw about 750 amps until the motor is up to speed, which might take a couple of seconds. During this time, Depending on the source impedance, the voltage may drop 5 to 10% and may cause the lights to flicker or other loads to be affected. For a typical induction motor, the inrush current is primarily reactive current that magnetizes the motor. Similar to energizing a transformer, the noise that you hear during startup is the result of the magnetic field and mechanical vibrations caused by the significant current inrush. The voltage drop during startup can be calculated precisely using power system analysis software, or it may be estimated with simple calculations. In many systems, the upstream transformer is the predominant system impedance, so you can estimate the voltage drop during motor starting by multiplying the transformer impedance by the ratio of the motor starting KVA and the main transformer KVA. For example, if the main transformer for a facility is rated 500 KVA with 6% impedance, and you are starting a 100 horsepower motor across the line, you would estimate the voltage drop by the following method. First, assume the KVA of the motor is approximately equal to horsepower. Then, for a 100 horsepower motor, estimate the starting KVA at six times the operating KVA of 100, resulting in a starting KVA of 600. The ratio of motor starting KVA to transformer KVA is 1.2, so, the voltage drop across the main transformer during starting will be 1.2 times the transformer impedance, or 7.2%. This 7.2% change in voltage may cause lights to dim or flicker, but since most loads can endure a 10% voltage change, no formal study is required. For larger motors, say a 300 horsepower motor on the same transformer, the same approach would indicate a voltage drop of almost 22%. This is significant enough to justify a more precise analysis to determine if reduced voltage starting should be considered. Motor starting analysis is much more detailed than a simple voltage drop calculation. System impedances and motor dynamic characteristics such as torque and current at various speeds are considered. With this information, we can calculate the motor acceleration time and all of the associated currents and voltages. Various starting methods are available to minimize the inrush current and the voltage drop during motor starting. Today, the most common for low voltage motors are solid state motor starters, often called soft starters, like this S811. Much like a dimmer in your home, a solid state soft starter delays the firing of the SERs and the RMS voltage is proportionally reduced. 
This process temporarily causes significant harmonic current to flow during startup, which may cause problems with other loads. This normally is not a problem, but worth noting. During startup, variable frequency drives are very similar to solid state soft starters. Although drives are excellent motor starters, if the drive is not needed for normal operation, in other words, if the motor runs at full speed during normal operation, then a drive is overkill, and it actually adds to the losses in the power system. For large, medium voltage motors, auto transformer starters, like this 4160 volt, 1000 horsepower, reduced voltage starter are often used. In this case, the taps of the auto transformer are selected and switched with vacuum contactors to reduce the inrush current and the voltage drop to an acceptable level. Other methods for medium voltage motor starting include using solid state motor starters and variable frequency drives. One method that Eaton has designed using our medium voltage drives for large industrial facilities like wastewater treatment plants uses one medium voltage drive as a soft starter for multiple motors. Once the motors are started, they are transferred to a running bus where they run across the line. This is a very economical way to take advantage of a VFD for the purpose of starting. If needed, the drive can be used for the final trim motor, saving money by controlling the speed and the output of the VFD. Finally, since most of the inrush current is reactive current, capacitors are sometimes used to compensate for the inrush current, but these capacitors have to be coordinated with the motor starting so that they are not on the system when the motor is off or when the motor is fully started. Otherwise, they could unintentionally raise the voltage of the system and create a significant leading power factor. Many people are under the impression that using a reduced voltage starter or other starting method will decrease the demand charges on their utility bill. This is misleading for two reasons. First, the demand charge is typically based on real power or kilowatts, while most of the current drawn during startup is reactive power or kilovars. More importantly, demand charges are usually based upon rolling 15 minute averages, not the instantaneous peak, and the motor and the load require the same amount of energy to accelerate regardless of the starting method. When averaged over 15 minutes, the demand charges are the same. Starting a motor on a typical utility source may yield substantial voltage drop resulting from the impedance of the main utility transformer. However, since the typical source impedance on a transformer is 5 to 6 percent and the source impedance of a generator is 15 to 20 percent, the voltage drop during starting while powered by a local generator is much more significant and the starting time is prolonged. So care should be taken to evaluate contingency situations where large motors or multiple blocks of motors are started on a generator source. Here at the PSEC, we can easily change the source impedance and demonstrate the effect of starting across the line or with a reduced voltage starter on a weak generator source. Starting a motor may require analysis and engineering depending upon the size and type of the motor, but running a motor requires additional consideration. Motor protection ensures that your motors operate properly and are protected from damage after they are started. Here at the Power Systems Experience Center, you can see many different types of motor protectors from simple overload devices to much more sophisticated predictive diagnostic protection that ensures the electrical health of your motors. This C440 is a simple solid state overload that evaluates current levels, current balance, ground fault, and other current related parameters. Generally, these types of devices are looking for gross changes or locked rotor conditions that might damage the motor. This C441 motor protector adds additional voltage and power analysis that may show issues like voltage imbalance and power factor. The latest motor protector, the C445, adds even more capability by looking at advanced parameters like torque, motor efficiency, and energy. Motor protection is usually installed in a motor control center, or MCC. Each section of an MCC is called a bucket. Typically, each bucket feeds one motor. Inside each bucket is usually a protected device such as a circuit breaker or fuses for fall protection, a contactor to turn on and off the motor, an overload device or motor protector that can trip the contractor and peripheral controls for local or remote operation. The benefit of using a contactor to turn on and off the motor is that they can take hundreds of thousands or millions of operations where a circuit breaker may take 10,000 operations. Medium voltage motor control, like our amp guard starters, are similar to low voltage MCCs, but in a much larger footprint. Commercial buildings, loads are divided fairly equally among lighting, plug loads like computers, and air conditioning loads. Since the air conditioning loads account for about a third of the building loads, protection and motor starting impacts of the HVAC units 
must be evaluated closely to ensure there are no adverse impact on other building loads like lighting and sensitive electronics. For industrial facilities, motors account for upwards of 70% or more of the loads and therefore they are extremely critical for the process and operation of those facilities. Here at the Power System Experience Center, we have motors ranging from 5 horsepower to 300 horsepower and various starting and protection methods that we can demonstrate in real time. We can help you decide how to start and protect critical motors. Contact us or your local Eaton representative to schedule a visit to the Power Systems Experience Center today.